video, we're going to build a, an application, a really simple application, that's going to use computer vision to automatically cap, cap, uh, create captions on that, on that picture. So stay tuned. We've had some really interesting projects recently where a, de a detective, for example, wanted to go through and take pictures of a crime scene. And rather than have to go through after the fact and document each picture and what that picture was looking at, we wanted to use computer vision to do the same thing. So that's what this video is all about today, is creating automatic captions and descriptions on pictures. Microsoft Computer Vision is an Azure service that can do just that. Uh, the first number of calls are free inside that as well. So let's start with how do we create the, uh, the computer vision service and what is it? Well, computer vision can do a lot of cool stuff. It can document, it can uh, uh, document the picture, the captions. It can do things like OCR, where it recognizes the text in the picture. It can also identify celebrities. It can identify, uh, if you train it properly, it can identify other people inside that as well, like employees, for example. It also can go through and identify, um, uh, is it a male? And what is the age of that male? And ethnicity and all sorts of really cool demographic information you can get from that. So in this example, we're going to have a camera control or, or a picture control that when we open this up, we'll go through and, and describe what it's seeing on the picture. So let's begin by opening up our Azure service and our blank application. So what I've done here, let me go ahead and drag this down. Oh, come on. <coughs> Sorry, guys, I'm getting over a little bit cold here. So this is my Azure tenant right here. And I have, um, oop, there we go, come on. There we go. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a, a brand new resource. This resource is going to be a computer vision resource. So as I do this, I'm not actually gonna go through and create it all. We, have, we already have one enabled, but if I create a new resource, we'll then look for the computer vision resource. Now that gives you access to a whole bunch of API goodies with that. So as I go through this, well, uh, there's so many Azure servers as you, as you can imagine now, that it's better just to kind of type in computer vision. There it is. Now, the first amount of X of calls are going to be free with the service now also. And, I, and for, for basic kind of development and proof of concepts, you chances are you're never going to uh, in, encounter this. Now you can use this, you can integrate this into Microsoft Flow, or you also can integrate this into, into Power Apps as I'm going to do here. I'll just give it some kind of fake name here. Uh, it'll be my sandbox environment. You'll notice uh, there is, I'm already using my free one, so I have to go to the pay one now in this, in this case, instance here. But the free one will give you a fair amount of calls for free free, but you only get one per subscription. So I'm going to cancel now, but what you'll do next is after I get those resources, let me go back to my dashboard. After I go through and create it like you see here, it's only a few seconds to create it. You'll go back to your example, my, your computer vision item, and then you'll click on um, the keys area. So you hit show keys right here, or you, and it'll give you a key that you're going to use when you create the connection. There's keys right here also. So this is going to work uh, in one of two ways. You might decide to do this through a flow, Microsoft Flow, where you send all of your SharePoint items through, and maybe as you're uploading a SharePoint, you want to automatically document those. You might also decide to just do it right inside of Power Apps. Either way, you're going to need that key then inside of that. Notice that if you do change that key, all of your apps will also break as well. So you need to be very, very careful with that key. That's why I'm not going to show you my key right Right now. Uh, but that's, that's literally all the steps. You create it, you copy the key out, and then you're off to the races. So back over here again, uh, I'm going to go ahead and close down my Azure environment, and we'll keep open my Microsoft environment here for Power Apps. Now, next we have, now that we've done that, let's go down and well, let me go ahead and create a connection. So in review, I'll go to data sources, and we're going to create a connection here to the computer vision system. Now, when I created this originally, all it asked additionally was for my key as well. So if I go to computer vision API, okay, it's gonna take a few seconds to go ahead and create that. And that's the only connection I'm gonna use in this example. It's gonna be a very basic application, and I'm going to put a picture on the right, on the left here, excuse me. So I'm gonna do an add picture control, this is going to allow my users to upload their own pictures. 
So go ahead and just, uh, I'll just do a simple one. Of course, it works for cameras and all those kind of things as well. Now, on your phone, it'll actually allow you to, to go through and, and uh, take a picture. On the right here, I'm going to show the words that describe that picture. And on the bottom right, I want to show the caption that describes it. So to do this, I'm just going to go ahead and click on a sample picture here, just so we can kind of play around here. And let's pick on uh, Willy Wonka here, for example. Okay. So next, we want to go through and describe what this picture is looking at now. So to do that, uh, we're going to use a control uh, to do that, like a collection to do that. Because what's going to come back is a table back of all the stuff it sees in this picture. So because of that, we're going to need a gallery and we're going to need a, 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 um, a collection for that gallery. So to do that, I'm just going to select this little uh, change button right here. Oh, and it's being a little stubborn here, so make sure I have the button selected. And I'm looking for the on change event. There's a few ways we can do that. I'm going to keep it simple and say whenever you change this, I want to go ahead and put my event on top of that. We also could have had a button that says analyze. Uh, in this case, we're going to do it the way we're doing it now is an automated approach that whenever you change a photo, it'll automatically analyze a photo. The only downside of that is it might use up more calls than what we want. If, if a user is like taking lots of pictures and not really sure that that's the right picture they want to use, uh, we might have that kind of problem. So in my case, I'm going to use a collection. Now, a collection is a special type of variable that holds a table. And we really covered it a whole lot, but there's a lot of videos on this from great ones from Shane and also. And this is, uh, I actually, Paul has some great ones on how to do this inside of Flow as well. Uh, so some awesome stuff you can find out here for, uh, for this, kind of, uh, this kind of example. So we're going to use this, this function called clear collect. That's going to basically purge the collection and then reload it again every time we do this. And I'll just call this uh, call image descriptor or DSC or whatever you want to call it. So that's the name of my collection or variable in this case. I take an array and then I'm going to go ahead and do uh, computer vision API. And when I type in dot, there's a whole bunch of goodies we can do inside of this. So we can describe what an image is in the URL. We can actually create thumbnails from an image. We have OCR availability. We can also um, uh, tag an image and kind of train the images. In our case, we're going to describe the contents of the image. And we'll do OCR tomorrow so you can kind of see what it's like to take a picture of, a, of an item and pull the text out of that. So the OCR example is what the Sheriff's Department is using here locally to, on all those old handwritten letters, they want to be able to tr translate that into computer text. So it's now searchable. Okay, so lots of good stuff we can do around this. It's amazing technology. So we're going to describe the image. The image we're going to do, I, I didn't actually give it a proper name, but we'll go ahead and I've got one here called up, uploaded image one dot image. There we go. Okay, now the inside that table is basically, think of it like a JSON query where it's got a whole bunch of stuff embedded in other stuff, embedded in other stuff. So I want to go one level down and then embedded, and I'm going to type in description. <coughs> Excuse me. So the description is going to go through and find out how, what are all the things that describe this image. Let me close that parenthesis there, and now you'll see we have a, we're going to uh, wipe and load this variable, this collection here. We're going to load up from this image all the descriptors that it has. Now inside that now, and I've done that, let me go ahead and, and point to Willy Wonka one more time here. There we go. Now that we've done that, over in File and Collections, we're going to see this new collection right here. Now it's not populated yet, but we're about to populate that in a second here. Next step is to add our gallery. So this gallery is going to show a list of all the descriptors it thinks it, it sees inside this. So let me go ahead and select our vertical gallery. There we go. And I'm just going to put a just single word kind of tiles inside of this. I'm going to point to my collection. There we go. I only care about the word, so I'll pick title. Okay. And I don't want text. Now this is a little bit unusual here because it's not going to point. I can't point directly to it. What I have to do is on the gallery here. I'm going to type in first, okay, to kind of navigate because there's multiple little sub tables almost inside there. And I'll type in uh, first my collection name, dot, and you'll notice it has captions and it has tags. I'm going to get the tags in this case. Now it recognizes, oh, what value do you want to show? Do you want to show the value of those tags? And that's the only thing you'll see inside this. Okay, so let's go ahead and change this picture to something else so we can kind of get trigger that change event. Let's pick uh, my friend right here. Okay, now you'll see the dancing ants up here going up, and there we go. We see a person, a man holding, he's pulling a pose, he's smiling at the camera, and so on. Uh, now, 
I want to get the, the caption as well in this. So I can quite, of course, you know, stretch this out. It's scrollable, so we can see all the things that, that ultimately wears. And again, it's getting less and less confident the lower I go down here. So we're seeing like uh, his uniform t color and all those kind of things. Now that we've got that, I want to put the caption underneath that. So let's put one more label down below. All right, let's make this a little more transparent so we can see that we're out of the gallery and into the label. So to do that, I'm just going to make, make the color uh, white, make the background color blue or dark, and then let's also make it a little bolder so we can kind of just, just see what that looks like. Again, not needed, just a little fanciness that we're trying to, I'm um, a little OCD, as you can tell in the past few videos here. All right, with that now done, let's get to our text. And what my goal is here is to go through and specify, well, what is the system automatically captioning this? Now, we can go through also and specify, well, how confident are you that you're seeing a male wearing a, uh, wearing a football uniform, for example? So if it's a certain confidence or less, then we won't even show that. So we can go through and specify and create if-then statements to kind of catch ourselves if the system is, is failing. All in all, if you see it at, at 85, 90%, is it's generally very, very good at describing these pictures. Occasionally, like I took a picture of my brother laying on the ground, uh, and it said, a small woman laying on the ground. So it, it gets things kind of goofy sometimes, but all in all, it's pretty darn good. It's getting better all the time. So back over here again, let's change the text, the, the caption of this. And again, this is going to be, keep in mind, what's happening here is we have multiple tables kind of nested in here. So we're going to go to our first table, and uh, we're going to go, again, one more time first again. So we're kind of navigating down the, down the, the, the chain of events here. We're going to point to our collection. And once we do that, we'll type in dot captions. All right, and I'll put this, the, 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 uh, the code for this down below after this video is done also. And then I want the text from that caption. So notice if I type in dot, it's giving me, it's kind of feeding me what it wants me to do here. Now the confidence is how confident it is of that caption, and the text, of course, is the caption itself. So in a moment here, we're going to see what does it think Blake, uh, uh, Blake Bortles is. So if I kind of hover that again, oh, close that parenthesis, there we go. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, I actually need to put my close parenthesis right here. There we go. So in this case, uh, Blake Bortles, who's a Jaguars quarterback, is reasonably popular, uh, well-known guy, not, not outside of Jacksonville, but it's able to tell who this character is in this case. Now let's go and find out how confident it is that's Blake Bortles. So I'll do an ampersand, and I'm going to do the same kind of code we had before. Let me just kind of copy and paste this. All right. This time, though, rather than our captions, we want to get the confidence of that. So dot, and I'll do, oh, captions, close that again, dot, confidence. Now we'll get a number back. Now you'll see here it's actually malformatted right now. It's not properly formatted. So we need to, we need to learn something to do about how do we format this guy. Well, first of all, if we multiply that times 100, we'll at least get uh, the right decimal spot. But additionally, we want to put a percent sign on that. We want to make, that, make sure that that's a little cleaner from a formatting perspective. So to do that formatting inside of Power Apps, we're going to allow, we're going to do a little additional stuff inside of here. So first of all, I'm going to type in text. That's where it's going to, it's going to force us to do a formatting now. Then I'll do, so it's going to take that string that I'm tasking in now, and it's going to format that as a text. I'm, to, I'm pending it into a, to a string in this case. Do a comma and then specify what do I want, what kind of format I want to do this. Well, in my case, I want two decimal spots to the left of the decimal, sorry, two numbers to the left of the decimal spot, and then one to the right of the decimal spot. So I'll do a number sign, so two digits, dot, one digit, and then do a percent sign, oh, uh, a percent sign, there we go, and then I'll end that with that. So now, and I can type in whatever I want here, by the way, I could do like a, like a percent, percent, percent or a, some kind of completely nonsense thing like that. So it's taking whatever my literal word is here, and it is treating that like, 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 it's, like it's doing here. And it's not taking care of all the rounding and all those kind of things. And you'll notice that whenever I click outside of this and come back to it, it's going to rewrite my code a little bit and put some US English uh, dialect locale in there. So it does take care of that a little bit. It's, it's, it's optional when you're typing it in, but it will go ahead and overwrite what I'm typing in uh, after the fact. So with that now done, let's try it a little bit here. Let's go ahead and run this bad boy, and let's go ahead and change the picture. Let's try our Willy Wonka again. Let's see how he looks. All right, let's just try our, 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 our family picture here. 
All right, there we go. And a few, it takes about three seconds or so. We're getting a 99 point uh, whatever percent. As you can tell, I, I must have stripped out that last uh, 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 digit there. And so I can go ahead and try again. Let's try Willy Wonka again. Now let's see if it figures out Willy Wonka or is it going to think it's, uh, let's see, oh, Gene Wilder. So it actually recognized it was Gene Wilder, not Willy Wonka. And he sees he's wearing a silly outfit in this case. So the computer vision is pretty amazing, isn't it? So it has some really cool stuff you can do with this. And as you kind of play around and, and, and you know, pick my picture here from one of my last, my last webinars, uh, it was, it's going to say a man smiling at the camera. And it's only 82% certain that I am a man. So because I'm probably hiding certain things in this case uh, behind those envelopes. So lots of neat stuff we can do with this. And this is a really simple application. Of course, if you're doing this in a phone app, it's going to be smart enough to actually recognize it's in the phone app and allow you to have access to the camera control also. So what we're using this for here at Pragmatic Works is for things like law enforcement, take pictures of a crime scene. We're also going to be using this for uh, an estimator application, where if you're an insp home inspector, you can go from room to room taking pictures of, of different things. And after you're all done, it's going to then save that off to the, to the website, our SQL Server or SharePoint, and it's going to automatically caption these. The importance of that caption for law enforcement or for things like the, 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 the application I mentioned before, the estimator, is now you'll have the ability to go through and search for fireplaces. And it'll show you only the fireplaces now and, and uh, or, you know, dead bodies or whatever it might be, as morbid as that may sound. So lots of cool stuff you can do with this caption. This is just, just scratching the surface of the things we can do. Of course, we can integrate flow into this. There's some great videos that, that are already out there for that. So I want to show you one with just integrating it directly into Power Apps. Now, tomorrow we'll look at the OCR side of this, where I take a picture of a, of a letter I receive, a handwritten letter, and convert that into text. Uh, or handwritten like signatures or those kind of things. So that'll be our next video tomorrow. Hope you enjoyed this presentation though on how to integrate computer vision into Power Apps directly. And if you have any questions, please add them to the comments down below. Please give us a thumbs up and also please look at our training at pragmaticworks.com and don't forget to subscribe. Have a great day. Thank you.